Got your boot on the neck of your opponent, never ever <laughs> let it up. But you let Stephen Harper up. Why'd you do that? Uh, I have great respect for Alan McKechn, is a great figure in the party, and uh, but I just don't see politics like that at the moment. Uh, uh, I think that uh, we're in the middle of an economic crisis. Uh, we had an election last October. I had to uh, make it clear that I thought the government's performance was disappointing in a lot of serious respects, so I had to get his attention. Uh, and then I went in to meet the Prime Minister, and it turned out that he was willing to come more than halfway. And I thought at that point, well, uh, let's give this a try. Let's go the extra mile to try and get some decent employment insurance for Canadians. And so we're going to try. I've got no guarantee of results, but I'm going to try. Well, I would have gone halfway if I were him, too, because he was in trouble. The premiers were, four Western premiers were lining up with you. The other opposition parties were lining up with you. You had them on the ropes on, on EI. So, I mean, shouldn't you have pushed them all away and pushed them into an election, which some people think, especially in your party, you could have won? Uh, could have, should have, would have. Don't want to go there, Craig. Um, what I'm concerned about is to see whether it's possible with a government with whom I have serious disagreements to get something good for Canadians that is a, uh, a substantial, not a minor, not a, not a tinkering, but a substantial reform of EI that moves us towards national standards. We've got 58 regional standards for EI. It doesn't make any sense. I got the Prime Minister to, to admit for the first time this week it didn't make any sense. So we're working towards the solution. I'm going to try in good faith to get there. I don't want, I want to tell the audience that I don't hold out. Uh, uh, I can't give you any guarantees we're going to get there, but I'm going to try. And then, but I'm also not going to waste time here. If we don't get a result by the end of September, then we're going to have to reconsider our options. Yeah, but maybe if you had squeezed Harper harder, uh, you would have gotten something now instead of having to make the unemployed wait until next fall. So, I mean, what are the unemployed getting out of the decision you made? Not, nothing now. Well, I think that uh, a substantial reform of EI that gets us to, or it's national standards that make the system fairer for all Canadians would be a huge victory. And getting it right, getting it right, is worth a little extra time. And also, let's not forget the other thing that Mr. Harper put on the table, which is the possibility of getting the self-employed into the system. Everybody knows that's a complicated thing to do and complicated to get right, but it would be a huge advance for our country. I don't I don't tell you I can do it. I tell you I think I owe it to the Canadian people mm. to try. Are you perhaps over-intellectualizing all of this? In other words, are you worried about the charge that you didn't go for it? You weren't willing to, to, to go for them, uh, take them down uh, when the moment was right? I don't, uh, I don't think about it that way, uh, Craig. I'm looking, I really am looking for uh, what, what's good for the country. Uh, I'm looking for uh, uh, getting employment insurance right. I'm getting, I'm working to hold this government to account. I'm very proud of the fact that this government, of all the governments in the G7, has been held to the toughest, strictest, most relentless account by the opposition. There's no other government in the G8 that's been forced to release a 234-page report and then told to come back in September and give us another one because this wasn't good enough. There's no other government out there that's doing it. And that's because the Liberal Party did its job. And I'm proud of that. Okay, well, if not now, if you're not willing to bring the government down now, what could possibly change by September that would cause you to want them to do that, to bring them down, after Mr. Harper will have the summer to, to, get, him, to, to get himself back, put back together, get on the road campaigning, save money. He'll be ready for a fight then. In a way, he was vulnerable now. I, I just don't see it in that way, Craig, with okay. respect. I have great respect for your experience and expertise, but I, I see it differently. The key thing for me is whether it's possible for us to make such substantial progress on employment insurance reform and bring the self-employed in that all Canadians think, wow, Wow, that was terrific. The, the politicians put aside their partisan differences and got something good for Canadians. That's the prize I'm, I'm trying to secure. I want to make everybody understand how difficult this is. Uh, I believe the Prime Minister is entering the, these discussions with good faith. Our party is entering into the discussions with good faith. We're going we're gonna to give it our best shot, Craig. Mm -hmm. But uh, if in the fall we haven't got there, 
uh, we're going to have to reassess the situation because at that point, you know, uh, Canadians will begin to ask, what's going on? This parliament is not delivering for us. So you're not worried about the charge some of your critics made, and even one or two in the party, uh, that you showed weakness at a moment critique here? I just don't see it that way. Uh, we feel, when I talk to my caucus, when we're together, I get a very, very strong sense. I can look you in the eye, Craig, and say, uh, we're a united party, uh, strongly convinced that we did the right thing for Canadians this week. I, I had nothing but uh, uh, pats on the back from my colleagues and friends. We're going into the summer to uh, uh, take uh, our case to the Canadian people. Uh, we're going to work in good faith with the government, but we're not going to go on and on forever here. This thing has a fixed deadline. We, we must achieve results for the Canadian people. If we can't, then we're going to have to reassess the situation. Do you feel, in fact, that you are in a difficult position now to support the government, even if they do come up with something that's useful next time around? Uh, Craig, I, uh, <laughs> our party, our party really wants to do right by Canadians. We, we, you have to remember, we liberals have this deep feeling we built the country. A lot of the great things that Canada's the Canada, Canadians are proud of happened because of liberal governments and we we did it because we put the country first the Canada pension plan Medicare that national flag the mm. fact that we're a bilingual country all the Charter of Rights and Freedoms that's the party that 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 we love and and that I'm trying to serve and uh, we try and put the country first and get a good result for Canadians but let's not overestimate the difficulties here a substantial, serious, fundamental reform of employment insurance that gets us national standards and fairness mm. for all Canadians is not easy. You can't do it overnight. You, we're going to try. That's all I can promise Canadians. That's all the party can promise Canadians. Are you trying, in this essence, to do this job of opposition leader in a different way? In other words, if we're going to have endless years of minorities, which is possible, you're trying to say we can't have endless brinkmanship also. So the job of opposition leader is to make parliament work, even at the risk of supporting a government? Our party is very aware that, you know, with Mr. Obama in the, in the presidency, he set a wonderful model of trying to do politics differently. We're trying to do politics differently. You're right, we're in a minority parliament where two parties, the Bloc and the NDP, I've got respect for the people who vote for them, but in the Parliament of Canada, they don't even bother to read a budget before they vote against it. They didn't even bother to read the, the accountability report before voting against it. That means that there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, a clutch of people in the Parliament of Canada who make it very hard for us to do the people's business. So in that situation, it's responsible for a leader of the opposition always to try and reach out. Why? Because otherwise we'd have an election every five months. And, and I don't think that's in the public interest. Uh, so much of the writing about you is saying, uh, who is this guy? This guy has not defined himself. So how would you, A, define yourself finally, and B, how would you rate your performance since you became opposition leader? I'll leave the second part to other people. I'll leave it to you, Craig, to rate me. Uh, I've been uh, graded all my life, and I always accepted what the teacher had to say. So you can play teacher, Craig. <laughs> Hardly. As for the as for the first thing, I, I think it's relatively simple. Uh, I'm a I'm a man who who loves his country. Uh, we've I've I've lived a, a life where I've done a, a lot of things that I think add to the experience that I can bring to to public office. I'm a convinced and committed liberal. Uh, one of my heroes is Mike Pearson. He did all those great things for our country, the flag, the pension, Medicare. That tradition of practical, middle of the road, pragmatic solutions for Canadians is, is you know, is in my guts. It's in my kind of, it's in my genes. And I, and I feel that if given the chance, I'd just work night and day to be worthy of that tradition. And, do good things for Canadians. I think that's who I really am. Mr. Nanev, thanks for doing this and uh, have a good summer.